Welcome everybody to another episode of DWP Digital's podcast. My name is Stuart and today we're discussing the importance of user research, the approach we use and the impact it has on our projects and services. This is our last episode for the year and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our guest speakers who made this series possible. And a big thank you to you, our listeners, for joining us on this journey. I hope you found our topics and themes interesting and useful. So let's get started. Sheena, Chris, John and Malcolm, would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Sheena Gawler. I'm the lead user researcher in the health function here at DWP. I've been at DWP for three years and prior to that I was a user researcher at HMRC. Prior to that I worked in academic research at University College London mainly working on randomised control trials. And before all of that, I was um, an exercise instructor and a photographer. Chris Moffat, um, I'm a senior user researcher within DWP. I started in DWP two years ago now, moving across from HMRC as a user researcher. Um, background for me, is all government based. Um, I started when I was 19 years old, worked through various operational areas, things like tax credits on the phone lines, started a career in user research in a digital environment about nine years ago now and have just continued in that space moving to the present day with DWP and working at the moment in health and disability. Uh, Hello, my name is John Houghton. I'm a lead interaction designer at DWP. I've been with DWP for three years now. Um, I started out um, in user centred design as a um, uh, user researcher with the NHS and then um, HMRC. Um, And I've also worked in the banking sector before coming into DWP. Hi, I'm Malcolm Camden. I'm a senior product manager within um, the health and disability space at the Department of Work and Pensions. And I used to be a a user researcher and have worked at the Department of Work and Pensions for about four years now. So what key principles do we follow when carrying out user research? So um, in the first instance, we would look to establish um, a really clear research question And what we mean by that is what the research is looking to find out. And then the skill of the user researcher lies in selecting the most appropriate research methodology to answer the research question. So, for example, if the research question was about information architecture, we might use something like a card sort, whereas if the research question concerned usability of a digital product, for example, we might use uh, usability testing as our methodology. We also focus a lot on making sure the data collected are not skewed. For example, um, we wouldn't uh, want a researcher asking leading questions um, and we need to remain very open to finding out things that are not already on our agenda. Uh, And in a nutshell, I guess this is all about making sure the research is really robust and so the evidence that we gather is sound. What methods and methodologies do we follow and why are some better than others? Um, The full range of user research methodologies um, can be, broadly speaking, categorised against two uh, what we'd probably call continuums. So one of these is attitudinal versus behavioural, which simply means does the methodology provide insight about what the user actually does, which is their behaviour, of course, or what they say they do, which is their attitude. And uh, again, generally speaking, behavioural insight is considered of higher value because what people say they do is not always what they actually do when we want the real behaviours of our users. The other uh, metric or continuum is qualitative versus quantitative. And this describes, of course, uh, whether the research data collected are numerical or not. So, for example, 
uh, something like the time users spend on a screen is very much quantitative, whereas something like their trust of government is rich qualitative data. Um, and uh, because quantitative data tell us what people do, whereas quali data tells us why people do it, we wouldn't think about uh, one of these as being better than the other, but we would need to look to use both in order to triangulate and collect the full picture. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think the point that Sheena makes there at the end around triangulating in um, on insights is very important. I think certainly from my perspective, when I look at making decisions around a, a, a product or service, um, if several methodologies have been used across a range of sort of qualitative and quantitative um, uh, you, you know, data points. It, it, it's it's really powerful because then I can say, look, we've seen users tell us this in, say, it, you know, qualitative interviews. We've got some data from, say, Google Analytics that speaks to that trend that was observed in research. And we've also confirmed it via, you know, a survey or something like that. So, you know, it, 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 as Sheena says, I think it's not necessarily you know, some methods are more suited to others to try and find out the answer to certain questions. Um, but for me, it's if we can have a range of things that help us narrow in and, and really ensure that we have robust insights, then that's really the gold standard. I think I would just add to that in terms of talking about when we are and as we are use our research as working within teams, um, especially in teams that I've been involved in across HMRC and across DWP within health and disability, we generally practice the qual side of things from a research perspective. So methodologies like one-to-one -one interviews, retrospective interviews, um, understanding um, methodologies around usability testing with various participants of research. So very much like the qual, from a qual perspective, what's really important as Malcolm referenced as well as a mixture of those methodologies and from a quantitative, quantitative perspective, it's in relation to the numbers and the volumes, and that's given us the the what, um, and that generally feeds in to the why. So if we've got a load of what from the, the quant side of things as a researcher, I have a real interest in that, because it also helps me in the planning um, of future research and, and focus on the qual perspective in terms of the methodologies that we're utilising as well. So talk me through the stages and types of research we do, be it face to face, remote, in groups or with individuals. So projects have uh, stages from discovery through alpha and beta to live. And the aims of uh, our user research in each of these project phases are different. Thus, the types of research we do in each phase will differ. Um, commonly, discovery would entail gathering contextual data via something like depth interviewing. And uh, being contextual, this user research is ideally face to face in the person's real environment. So that might be their workplace or their home, but not in, in a laboratory setting. Um, we do sometimes conduct group research. But the downside of this is that the voice of quieter personalities can be lost. So I'd say that overall, the specifics of the research approach must best suit the methodology, the research question, and of course, the phase of the project. Just with, with that in mind and what Sheena's mentioned there, in terms of like user research and research being conducted across teams, we are always looking to discover things. So as the discovery moves into an alpha and as the alpha moves into a private beta, private beta and the public beta, there's a continuous interest from our perspective and from the teams that we're working within to learn about the users, to learn about the participants of research. So just because we've come out of a discovery phase where we're gathering a lot of insight in relation to the participants of the research, identifying our users, what the problems are that they experience and identify, at that stage in the, the agile sort of phase of development, as we'll progress through an alpha and into the beta stage as well, just because we're testing different prototypes, different approaches, we're still 
learning about things and the full full intention of us as researchers and, and us to bring insights back into the product teams to help us design services that that people can use um is to continual to is to continuously learn about like their experiences their expectations and and learning about the users throughout i think i'd just add that we have different questions that we that we ask um, at different stages of the project life cycle um, and it's it's about sort of horses for courses and the questions we have at the very beginning in discovery and we need answers on um, might be quite ill-defined might be quite nebulous might be quite broad um, whereas as we progress throughout those different phases um, the questions may well become very specific um, in order for us to, you know, make very clear decisions um, about the direction of a product as well. And so, you know, inherently the research needs to sort of adapt and change um, using different methodologies um, and doing different things um, as our, our needs change as a sort of a, a, a product team or a service team um, as well, just to give us that sort of just enough research to make the next decisions that we need to make and do what we need to do um, given where the project is at. So can we talk about how we turn someone's feedback into useful information? So I think predominantly for me, this is around prime first in the first instance, the researcher being that sort of representative of their own research within the teams. So having strong communication skills to, you know, gather the data, whether it's, you know, behavioral, whether it's sort of quantitative, engage with it critically, synthesize it into a sort of a clear and concise set of insights or a, a clear story that they can feed back to the team. Um, obviously, while the researcher is the main conduit for that, it's something that the rest of the team has to buy into, has to engage with, and has to sort of carry forward um, to have the, the group team discussions about right, well, we've learned this, what are the implications of that, either for the direction of the service, um, for decisions about design, um, for decisions about, you know, what, what we might be doing in terms of a technical direction and, and, and what we might need a product or service to do. Um, so I think the role of the researcher is, is, is being that conduit, but in terms of how does it impact the team, it's very much a sort of a, a team effort that everyone is bought into um, and is, you know, actively engaging with the story that the research is telling us um and you know for some of the things that you might learn in the discovery phase it's more about immersing yourself in that understanding of your users once you get to the stage of say a you know a public beta when you've got really robust kpis and analytics um it might be that we can make some really fast decisions based on a few key data points that we you know uh we, we we thoroughly understand and given the thorough immersion we have in the you know understanding the needs and situation of our users we feel very confident to make that decision quickly um but again it's it's a conversation i think these things work best when they're sort of collective um although obviously yeah as as, as, as i've mentioned that i think the researcher plays a key role in sort of bringing that back to the team and being that representative um in the team i think we've all worked in teams where you know <laughs> where, where the ideal isn't the case um and where the researcher needs to be very forthright about presenting and you know forwarding um the needs of the user in that team so it's it's not to diminish the role but it's very much a sort of a team effort to to turn the insights into realities of strategy vision um design and what we eventually build i guess in terms of like um, as malcolm was was saying about telling the story really as well and, and communicating that to the rest of the team and stakeholders in terms of like um useful artifacts to help to do that quite often um we can turn the uh the, the insight into um storyboards to kind of bring those those um scenarios to life and engage an audience in the research and um and get, get across what what the research is telling us so uh, what happens in the lives of users, what they struggle with and why. Um, also kind of um, communicating that, that full story in, in things like uh, user journey maps as well. So um, where we kind of plot the interactions with a service um, from a user's perspective along, um, along a timeline and kind of aggregating some of the research insights into um, pain points and behavior and emotional responses to those scenarios in that single artifact can be really useful and powerful and to getting those those messages across and I think um, 
these artifacts as well as um, just touching on some of the stuff that Chris was saying earlier about as, as we continue to learn these these artifacts can be living documents that we continue to add to and um, can keep constantly referring to when we're, when we're presenting back the insights. How is research used to inform the direction of our services, influence stakeholders and make important decisions? So I think, as I mentioned in an earlier answer, when we talk about strong stories that we can tell, um, that's the key thing that we need to get out of research, especially at the early stage of a project. So when we start off in a discovery, we need to be really immersing an entire team and our stakeholders um, in the insights that we're learning from our users um, and in that research. And, and all of that will help in the long term um, to grease the wheels um, of the direction that best serves their needs as well. Um, really, when it comes to prioritizing and, and thinking about the strategy um, and vision for a service, there's no set formula. It's something that collectively a team will use a range of insights from a range of research sessions across a range of methodologies um, to arrive at. Um, it is in many respects um, a, 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 a dialectic process whereby you are engaging with a, a range of sources um, and, and, and critically analyzing them to think, yeah, these are telling me this, these are telling us that, um, and, and, and therefore the direction that you know we should be doing this, users might need that, um, or we should be making changes to this and all that as well. Um, so, so, so I think to come back to it, it's very much the, the, the team engaging um, with the story that the research is telling us. I mean, the point that John made earlier about artifacts is important. We, 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 we can well document um, the, you know, the insights that we're gaining, that can be very helpful in telling the story of our research and, and, and supporting the vision that we have for a service. Um, we can do a, a great deal of stakeholder engagement, including getting stakeholders and even ministers along to research to, to hear firsthand what our users are telling us. Um, and obviously, as we progress throughout the phases, um, you know, we can we can solicit regular feedback, making sure we're regularly you know, in, inspecting and adapting the service based on the sort of the continual findings that we're getting um, from user research, performance ana analysis and sort of uh, usability testing and a range of other things that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're actively doing. Um, very much for me, it comes down to individuals. You know, I as a product owner need to be engaging with research, making sure I'm taking it into account, regularly attending sessions, engaging with what researchers are telling me, revisiting past assumptions that may no longer be the case, um, you know, making sure that, okay, that helps to confirm some of what I thought, that lends more weight to this or that being a more valuable thing to do, you know, especially when I'm making decisions about roadmaps and, 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 and to do this before I do that, questions of value are heavily informed um, by what the research is telling me as we live in an imperfect world certainly within government where by no means do we have all the data um, and hard evidence that we might want and so in that in, in that instance some of the qualitative findings that we're, we're we're gaining from talking with users observing users um, in many cases, may be the only things that we have in order to make informed decisions about the direction of a product or service. Um, and, you know, we are constantly making decisions with an imperfect or incomplete picture, um, and we do the best we can, which is why we, you know, as best as, as uh, to as great an extent as we can, we need to come back to that point that we raised with the very first question of triangulating our insights across a range of methodologies wherever possible um, so that we can make sure that we're making, you know, as robust decisions um, as, as we can be without, you know, letting the, the, the perfect be the enemy of the good here. Um, and I would reiterate that sort of point around once we have enough research and evidence to, to feel that we as a team can make a decision, very much cracking on and making that decision, um, accepting that, you know, we can let things, we can let things fail, we can let things go wrong, because we're an agile, uh, you know, we, we work in an agile way, and we can come back and fix them if we break them. And that all the decisions we make will not be perfect, because user research isn't perfect, nor is performance anal analysis. Um, you know, we, we will make imperfect research, but we will do 
the best we can and gather as much insight as we can to make sure that we make as, as few of those wrong or imperfect decisions for users um, as possible. And another thing we need to consider here, which I should have mentioned, is the, is, is the need to in, um, influence stakeholders um, and, and challenge some of the potentially long held assumptions that people across operations and, 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 and policy and, 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 and service delivery may have had um, based on the fact that, you know, they haven't had always had access to the 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 great resource of you know um, of, of user researchers and that, and that sort of fresh coherent engagement with um research insights as well um and so the more we can sort of tell a convincing concise narrative um and present them with as much insight and data um as we can certainly you know from the product manager perspective that really helps to take them along on the journey that we're trying to go on um within digital because let's face it we operate in a especially within government um in a in a complex landscape where realistically an individual team does not have the autonomy to do whatever their research may or may not be telling them to do. There are a lot of people that we need to convince that this is the approach we should be taking for this service. Um, and so research plays a, a really key role um, in that process. I agree with uh, Malcolm's point that we can fail fast within an agile environment um but it is also the case that if the user research is robust and of the highest standard our team members are likely to um really get into the shoes of our users and therefore the chances that we make wrong decisions are reduced so can you tell me about our data sets our models and user profiles so yes, we continuously sort of review, and this is part of ongoing research. So the data sets, models, user profiles, all of those things are really important for research in mind. And I know John mentioned some things around the visibility of research coming in and making sure that the visibility of that research is prominent within the services, within the teams and the services that obviously we're working within. For me, the individual researchers utilise different models and tooling to represent the research that's being conducted as well. So we in Health and Disability, as an example, have got a range of case studies um, that have been created based on data coming in from user research, from the insights that come in, um, created on factual sort of insights on the research that's been conducted. Um, alongside these, we have user goals and needs that represent those users and those users being citizens and members of the public that interact with DWP um, for benefit purposes, but also to understand what those experiences are like outside of DWP, because it's not just about citizens and users coming in to DWP to say apply for a benefit and receive the benefit or receive a decision based on the benefit application. So bringing in those user goals and the needs that we've identified, understanding the communication expectations. So we've got a, a set of communication principles and, co and considerations to sort of consider as internal members of staff, as internal representatives on teams when we're building the services. And like I said, like researchers on teams form their own profiles, characteristics of the users. There's different ways that we can do that. Um, and the sort of different opinions to a degree in relation to researchers and the, the tools that are utilized and teams and the tools that are utilized as well. So personas are one thing that can be created to represent those users, those citizens, um, different things. We can use profiles of, of citizens and case studies as I've mentioned that we have in health and disability. Like I say, across DWP, across health and disability, there's there's different ways to represent users, different ways to use those data sets, models and, and profiles. And for me, it all depends on how these things are created. Um, if they're based on actual evidence from research, if it lacks in sort of assumption based because the things that we think are going to happen in our building services based on assumptions, then it's obviously a little bit more concerning because 
it's not us that are using the services at the end of the day, it's the actual users, it's the citizens in this aspect as the primary user. So if we're basing the things that we're producing, so the, the, the profiles that we're creating, um, the artifacts and the visuals that are being created on the back of actual user research that's conducted, and how we communicate those effectively is an important aspect of that. And if we're doing that in the right way, then we're feeding the teams with the relevant insights and we're using the data sets, we're using the models, we're using the user profiles with research in mind in the right way. And that's allowing us to make effective decisions on the services that we build and building those services cross channels. So it's not just about the digital services that we're building, it's understanding what the needs are from the, the users that we are engaging with as part of research and building a journey that satisfies and, and meets those needs. How do you share the knowledge we gain across all of our services? A significant part uh, of the user research role, as we've already said, is creating research artefacts that will really effectively communicate our research findings. And uh, examples of these, I think we may have mentioned already, are things like journey maps, personas, and uh, documented user needs. Um, also, um, the storytelling element, you know, making sure that we can tell a story about our users that really engages our colleagues. And I often find that's about um, sharing the sort of real life um, sort of detail of users' experiences and uh, making sure we use verbatim quotes to really, uh, you know, bring those research findings to life and stop them being uh, sterile. Um, so we do do a lot of talking uh, at things like uh, show and tells. Um, and then the documentation is, of course, stored, which is part of our knowledge management strategy. And uh, uh, this forms part of the evidence base that we would draw upon to inform our design decisions. So how can our user researchers influence design decisions? Yes, yeah, so uh, the, res the research, I feel, um, really does shape the design decisions that we make. And we've spoken a bit before about um, how the communication of uh, research insights is really caught to influence in the design decision, um, but also involving the, t the whole team in the research really helps to embed the, f the findings um, in the individual and, and the collective knowledge of the service team as well. So at, at any point that we're designing something, we're considering its impact on the user. Um, what I'd say is that, um, for me, like designing government is, is really is a collaborative process. So involving user researchers brings the voice of the user into the process and um, there's nothing more valuable than having that outside perspective influence the design decisions that we make. Um, this helps us to strike the right balance between user needs and departmental requirements so we can really be confident that we're building the service services that are simple to use and meet the, the needs of the user. I completely agree with uh, what John said and just wanted to add that we can't ask, uh, we can't and indeed we shouldn't ask users to solutionize and we can't ask them about everything. Um, but if our user research is good, then we'll know who the user is and what they're trying to do. And therefore that knowledge allows us as a team to make those design decisions. Is the way we work unique? Do other government or private organisations work in a similar way? So prior to DWP, um, as I mentioned as part of my introduction, I was a user researcher within HMRC for seven years, which is basically where I sort of learned my trade in terms of research and built a skill set that I have now and are applying in DWP. The two sort of government departments in terms of the experience that I have within those with research in mind are very similar in terms of the approaches that we take to conduct user research. Um, 
as a researcher and, and as a researcher working within teams, we're always aiming to meet those government service standards. We're always aiming to meet those needs of the users. And um, so building services that effectively users can use successfully and achieve their aim. And that's what the whole intention is for us as sort of working within this environment. Um, researchers as well, making sure that we've got the tools and the skill sets to be able to conduct the role and make sure that we're sort of providing the needs of the team. So coming back with relevant insights, coming back with insights that are value to the team and are factual based on the research that's conducted. Again, same approach across HMRC, um, across DWP, and when I've been assessing user research as part of an assessment panel, say similar approaches across different government departments as well. One difference is um, the tooling that's used within the departments can differ. Again, the principles and the approach is the same, but the tooling and the access to users and the opportunity to be able to, yes, identify the users as part of the remit as a researcher and working with the team to do that, but the ease and access of those users, so we might know where those users are, we may know where they are going to in terms of third party organisations to get support and assistance. Um, what the difficulty, when the difficulty arises is like sometimes you've got to jump through various hoops to be able to get to the point and actually speaking to those users and that can differ between department and the setup of research as an individual researcher and experience that across various teams across the two organizations as an HMRC and DWP can differ um, but having that time to focus on research as a user researcher and not get involved in other aspects of the workload, albeit contributing to the different roles as part of Agile and, and as part of the work that the BAs do, as part of the work designers do, massively like important to collaborate in that way across the team and with the different roles in the team, but being able to concentrate as a user researcher on the actual research and the methodologies being applied is really important. I, th I think I'd just add a point um, to pick up on um, what Chris was talking about there in that depending on the organization that you're working for, um, researchers have access to varying degrees of, of tools, of software, um, are able to do varying different things in terms of re recruiting, sharing, um, you know, some of their data, recording, um, things like that. And that can have an influence ultimately on how well people are able to tell the story, how well they are able to evidence their research as well. So we, we, we should never underestimate, you know, the what might seem like a trivial um, restriction that sometimes we are under for understandable reasons in government, um, you know, can also impact um, the ability that we have to, you know, share videos of users or quotes from users or recordings from users, which can be really, really powerful and useful to help tell the story um, of research. I'd also mention that I've certainly worked across both large and small um, departments uh, within government and the, and the health service. And certainly uh, I've seen I see big differences compared to um, a, a, a big department like DWP or, or perhaps HMRC, although I've never worked there, um, and smaller organizations where you, in many respects, uh, have a bit more freedom and, and are less restrictive and you, you, you are regularly engaging at perhaps a, a, a higher level. Um, uh, but also you have less of a of, of an established community. You aren't doing things um, to, to such a scale um, as well. So there can be very different sort of um, experiences depending on the size of organization. And then I think it's also worth reflecting on the fact that within government, um, we obviously have some restrictions, but we also avoid some of the uh the the sort of the, the difficulties that people will have working in in in, pri in the private sector in terms of sort of market forces competition um and some of the the commercial pressures that they may be under although we have pressures of our own no doubt um i think certainly from uh hearing stories uh that have been shared with me around you know experience of working in various sort of private sector roles um 
uh, while they might have a degree of uh, a degree of freedom, uh, they are also under significant pressures in very different ways um, than we are in government. We have the luxury to an extent of being the only people who do what we do, and we are the only people who deliver these services. Um, we don't have to worry about another government that is stealing our users. Um, so <laughs> that's very nice. But obviously that shouldn't make us complacent about uh, our, our, our role in meeting user needs and delivering services for citizens. There is still that imperative um, to deliver to deliver value as, as quickly as possible um, for citizens. Um, it's ju it just may be that within government we have to worry less about um, some of the other commercial noise um, that other private sector organizations might have to deal with and, and researchers in those environments might be hampered by or, or pressured by. So what advice would you give to other user researchers? So I think with this question, for me, there's quite a lot of things to reference and I'll probably not cover them all, but like, yeah, based on the experience that I have over the last nine years and from the point in being very new to the role to the point that I'm at now, there's quite a few things like to reference the, the most important things for me with research in mind is the approach and planning to research is absolutely imperative and really important. Taking time to do this, um, understanding the what is part of your research, understanding the why, and also understanding the how. So when we're looking at the approach and planning, what do we want to learn? And um, what methodologies are we going to utilize to be able to learn that? Why are we doing it? And why are we engaging with these users from the users that we've identified? And how are we going to do that? All key to make sure that the research moves forward in a positive way. Um, and like focusing on that approach and planning and sharing that approach and planning across your team, across the organization that you're working within. So everyone is clear and has clarity on what that sort of research approach and plan is from the user researcher's perspective but also providing the team and others to contribute towards those plans and the approaches and to get feedback on that. And I think that's a massive thing as well to continuously get feedback and, and sort of um, input from others that you're working with, because as people may have already heard, user research being a team sport and it's always referenced, but it is that in terms of, right, the user research as a professional within that role, um, but the team need to contribute to that and the team need to take part in the, the plan and organization of research, the conducting of the research and the analysis and the outputs of the research as well. Research for me isn't just about testing a thing. So the discovery approach always provides value. And I mentioned it earlier on in, in another question. Um, but regardless of what phase of development you're in, if we're working in agile, which we do in government, if you're in a private beta, if you're in a public beta phase, if you're even in a live phase, there's always an opportunity to learn from the users and from the users that you've identified. And as a researcher, um, progressing through discovery and alpha and the beta, running blended sessions. So if you're running usability sessions in an alpha, making sure that you're, you're involved in some sort of, of interview technique in those sessions to learn from those users is still massively important and can provide real insight into the, the work that you're doing and the research that you're doing. The next point for me is having confidence in your approach. So as a researcher, I men mentioned it before, as a researcher on a team, you are the, the, the professional within that field. You have the knowledge and the expertise in the, in the research field. And one thing that I've learned um, as I sort of became more experienced within the research role um, is have confidence in the approach and have confidence in the research that you're conducting. And obviously you're getting feedback from the team and from others and, and take that feedback on board. Be confident and comfortable enough to challenge as well within the team, because that's always a positive, but challenge in the right manner. Um, ensuring that, like I said before, utilizing the other members of the team, helping with the, the planning and the conducting. And I mentioned the, the sort of importance of it being a team sport all sort of feeding back onto the way that you as a researcher run the research on that team. So making sure people are involved in the research and again, having confidence in the stuff that you're doing with research in mind. The next point and a couple more. So collaboration is really important as part of research. So collaborating amongst the team, collaborating in the wider you are community. 
so wider you was in terms of across like as an example health and disability we've got a community within health and disability so making sure that we collaborate across the different researchers is really important as well so we're sharing learnings we're sharing experiences across all of the teams across all of the roles and basically just collaborating wider and as wide as we possibly can based on the the user groups that you are researching with and then lastly is something that John referred to earlier on on one of the questions and that relates to telling the story and that's a real sort of important aspect of user research so we are conducting research with users we're, we're conducting various methodologies um bringing that back into the department bringing that back into the teams going to the likes of show and tells with your research and then attending assessments um so service standard assessments where you're basically showcasing the research that you've done that you have confidence in your user groups that you have confidence in the needs that you've identified and the artifacts that you've created being able to tell that story with the research in mind helps people understand the problem that you're trying to solve, but also is really important in relation to the research that's been conducted and the outputs and artifacts that have been created. So how you got to those outputs and artifacts, how you've created, for example, um, your user needs that are visible, how you've sort of fed into the user experience maps or the user journeys that you've created, how you've you've contributed and fed into your user profiles or your personas that have been created, given that structure and, and sort of backing in terms of the research that's been conducted and the outputs that have, have been created based on that and telling that story, really important things for me. Um, I'm not sure I could add um, anything further in terms of it, advice for um, a user researcher, but perhaps thinking about the other uh, roles in the team in terms of um, my advice would perhaps be that uh, to take the opportunity to get involved. Chris was talking about um, uh, in, involving the team in the planning and, in, and and how the research is conducted and and observing sessions and things like that. I think that's all really valuable in terms of sort of instilling that the the, the, the findings and the insight into the way that you do your work and, and it informs your design decisions as we talked about earlier um i think that it it just it's it's only ever going to make the product that you're working on better if you are involved in, in in that process as well i completely agree that uh we need to have effective planning um and uh you know professional understanding of research whether that's to do with sample sizes or skew or bias or whatever it may be but all of that notwithstanding i think my advice is get on with it because sometimes we spend too long talking about research and planning research and not actually doing it um and we can never help our team make the right design decisions um, unless we engage with users and lots of them. And I think I'd just pick up on um, Sheena's point there and my advice would be more around things not to do. Um, I've seen on a few different projects where I've worked with researchers not to generalize, but several people who have come from non-agile or academic environments who spend a huge amount of time planning research, producing vast reports about their findings that no one's going to read. Um, and so I come back to that mantra of just enough research for the team or service to make the decision it needs to make to answer the questions it needs to answer um, and to prove or disprove the hypotheses that, that, that they may have. I think the other point I'd make around someone starting off in a research in a user research role would really would to really be reflexive and understand the value that user research can bring and what it can do and what it can help with but also think strongly about what it can't do and don't oversell it user research in many cases cannot give you definitive answers about some questions and we need to be open and honest about that it will help inform um it it, it, it can evidence um but in many respects if you were to say 
do, do users prefer this or prefer that, which I've I've heard teams ask user researchers, we need to understand that user research does not necessarily have all the answers. And, and in fact, no, no form of research or, or data analysis may well be able to answer some questions. So it, it's, it's really understanding what user research does and does well, um, but also what user research you know, cannot give you a definitive answer on and what it cannot do and where the limitations of that lie. And, and, and being open and honest um, uh, you know, a, a, about that because a better understanding of that leads to you know, better research, um, and, and doesn't lead to, you know, people jumping and inserting opinion and bias and all sorts of other things and or, or just giving answers for the sake of giving answers. And well, because I've, you know, spoken to one person, I think this is the opinion and or, or this is the, what users prefer. You know, we obviously can't do that. And, 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 and so having that engagement with, you know, the with the methodologies, um, you know, w with what research is and what the limitations of it are, are, are very important. What has been your biggest discovery through user research? What has surprised you? So as part of user research for me, um, and with the question being around discoveries, I feel like I'm always discovering new things. Um, I see all discoveries as being big, um, ranging from, in my own experiences, researching with businesses and understanding their needs regarding the technical aspect and APIs in relation to services that we are building internally um, to what I would class as a bread and butter research for government users and those government users being primarily like citizens and members of the public. In my experience, and it's in reference to research that I've conducted in DWP and, and quite recently um, around health and disability and understanding the users and the prime users being citizens within health and disability, and what that allowed us to do was conduct research with those citizens um, in using the research to allow us to understand from the citizens perspective across a range of benefits that they had experienced engaging with DWP in relation to, but also around their experiences outside of DWP, around the health condition that, that they were experiencing at that time or had experienced as part of their their life um, and then obviously understanding their experiences in relation to DWP, all of which was fascinating to me as a researcher and regardless of how many sort of interviews and one-to-one -one sessions that I've had, contextual sessions, remote sessions since lockdown hit, doing usability research, testing various prototypes, always continuing to learn and always discovering new things as part of a, a research session as part of a, a user research role um, really really hits home for me when you're talking to members of the public or citizens um, around the health conditions and also the experiences that they have when engaging with government in this case in relation to health benefits and benefits that they feel they're entitled to and they have a lack of understanding of the benefits that we offer to a degree, um, not knowing where to go, who to turn to, talking to us quite openly about the health condition, how that sort of impacts them, how that affects them on a day to day basis. Um, and then on top of all of that, having to speak to the likes of DWP and engage with DWP around their health benefit um, and to in, sorry, in order to achieve the outcome of getting that financial support or getting their life back on track to a degree, all of which DWP can assist them with, but then learning about the pains that they're having and the challenges that they have in order to get to that end goal, so to speak, or achieve that outcome is like huge. Um, and it's massively impacting from a researcher's perspective. And you're bringing those insights back into the team and trying to get that sort of depth in relation to what the participants and the citizens are telling you as part of those research sessions, bringing that back into the department and reflecting on that um, as teams and, and making sure that we're removing those pains, removing those challenges and, and meeting those needs of the users. And the, in this case, the citizens as our primary users. Um, it's something that's really sort of powerful, um, something that I really and I'm really passionate about in terms of user research, I am the voice of the users and I'm bringing that back into the department and 
discovery as a phase is for me the most important phase in any research and um, that if you get that right or if you get the insights that you need to get from that discovery and bring that back into the teams bring that back into the department it helps build on the things that you do in alpha the things that you do in private beta public beta and then once that service goes to live whether that be a digital service whether that be a, a paper channel um, a method of telephony in terms of applying for a service whatever that is it makes sure that the outcome is effective from a departmental departmental perspective um, and the users are able to achieve what they set out to do from the offset so I think certainly to add to what Chris has said, one thing that really, you know, I've had a few rather surprising research findings um, throughout both being a researcher and, and, and being a product manager on a team, um, you know, to, to, to talk about a few examples, you know, when I was working on Get Your State Pension, we did a huge amount of um, testing of existing sort of pension award letters, where, whereby we realized that pretty much no one was reading anything apart from the top bit of the first page. Um, I also worked um, on a, uh, an agent facing system, um, looking at how we report deaths um, and realized that one or two things that we hadn't even deemed worthy um, of particular attention in user testing were being um, rather interestingly, shall we say, interpreted um, by by agents. You know, a classic example of where we thought we knew what our users um, needed and wanted, um, and we made the mistake of not focusing some of our research and testing effort on that, um, and failed, and needed to, um, to 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 change accordingly. So, you know, as research goes on, as as projects learn new things and change, you're always coming across um, surprising new findings and, and and different things. So, just before we end, how would you like to see your research being used in the future? With this in mind, I think we're still learning as a department. I think we'll still continue to learn. Um, and I don't think we'll be the only department learning within sort of the user research field and, and how that is effectively integrated into the work that we do, how we utilise research positively and, and we're getting the messages across. And as I've mentioned on previous questions around getting those insights back into the department and acting on those insights as well. I do think we're making great strides towards this. Um, I mentioned the discovery piece in relation to understanding citizens' goals and needs and creating artifacts on the back of that. So that's just one example in terms of the, the development and the progress that we're making with research in mind. Um, as a researcher, I always see the value in, in championing the actual research role and the value of, of research and what that brings into the teams embedding that into the teams as well so that research is occurring naturally insights are being acted upon ensuring that research is happening on a regular basis that all the teams and, and researchers have focus on the end users and those primary users being citizens um continuing to consider other users involved in the things that we are involved in in the problems that we're trying to solve and when i sort of refer to other users it's around third party organisations that we know have a, a heavy involvement around health benefits and that's come through research. Internal DWP staff, so all of our internal staff that are involved in the sort of touch points from a, a citizen's perspective are involved in, in getting the, the decision to the citizens and all of that in, in terms of the multitude of users and making sure that we are involving users in the research that we're conducting, all important um, in relation to the approach that we take. Having the opportunity and the ability to clearly articulate like what we found through research, what we've then done about the findings and the insights that we're bringing in, and then having the ability and the opportunity to showcase those changes with citizens, with third party organisations, and evidence and the, the difference that these changes have made in relation to the citizens experiences of DWP and in my case in relation to the work that's been done in health and disability the experiences and the, the positive experiences that citizens have in the longer term with the benefits and with the engagement that they have with DWP and an organization um, for me would be fantastic if we can get to that point at some some time in the future I think we've got a way to go to get to that point but like I said earlier the steps that we're taking, we're definitely moving
towards that and moving towards the success of that in, in relation to research and agile ways of working and the ways that the product teams are working within the department. So that ends our podcast for today. Hit the subscribe button if you want to make sure you don't miss our next series. And I'd like to thank Sheena, Chris, John and Malcolm for taking part today. It was really interesting to hear about your take on user research. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time on the DWP Digital Podcast.